If we could just get the current council here, we'd be fine. <laughs> I bet we could. Good morning and welcome to City Hall. We'll get started with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Ed Light is here from Grace United Methodist Church. He'll lead us in the invocation. Afterwards, I'll ask Councilman Larry McAtee if he'll lead us in the pledge. Would everybody please stand? Let us pray. Gracious God, on this 125th anniversary of our city, we gather here today to remember the past, to commit to the future, and we pray your blessings upon all of the neighborhoods of our city, the citizens who live there, for those who bring life and vitality to our community, for those who are most vulnerable within it, for the many public servants who serve us in so many ways, many times taken for granted. And we particularly pray for those who place themselves in harm's way for our protection. And we pray safety for them. And then, of course, Lord, we pray wisdom and guidance for those who make decisions here, who set policy and pass laws and oversee ordinances. May you grant them all they need in order to function as servants for us all, as we pray your blessings upon us all. Amen. Amen. Face the flag, salute. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the of United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good morning once again. We have a long string of festivities this morning. I'll bring first attention to the fact that this is the city of Oklahoma City's 125th anniversary. Let's show a round of applause as we get started. And we enjoy a wonderful relationship with Oklahoma City University. Not only do they share our name, but they uh, bring in lots of talented young people who uh, go on to do some incredible things, especially in the performing arts. And this week, they are performing South Pacific on campus. And we have asked, as we typically do, one of the cast members to come here and give us a, a sneak preview of what they might see this weekend. So I'll ask Nathan Goodrich to come over. I've lost sight of Nathan, but here he comes up. Nathan tells me he's from Dallas. And uh, uh, South Pacific, uh, if memory serves, introduced in the late 1940s, but yes. uh, 2,000 runs on Broadway and, and uh, a Rodgers and Hammerstein performance that, that never gets old. So. One of Greatest. Great. How do you want? Do you want to hold a microphone, or do you want to have it without a microphone? You're the boss. Young 
Gayer than springtime am I, gayer than laughter am I, angel and lover, heaven and earth, am I with you? And when your youth and joy Very nice, Nathan. And I'll, I'm going to hand you the microphone and allow you to promote the performance this week. Thank you. Uh, like he said, it opens this week. We open uh, Thursday night. Show is at 8 o'clock. We also have a 8 o'clock showing on Friday and Saturday with a matinee at 2 o'clock on Sunday. You can get tickets by going to the OC website and then following the links to the box office. Or Angela has 208, 208 is the box office number. 5227. Five, five, two, two, if you want that number again, that is... 208-5227. Thank you so much. Thank you. One more round of applause for Nathan. Thank you very much. I'm not sure exactly how to follow that, but um, I, am, I am going to do so by inviting two friends and two former mayors to come up with me now. Mayor Andy Coates and Mayor Ron Norick are here. Let's show our appreciation for their service to the city for coming up. That was good news. I'm going to hand you the microphone. It's nice to be back. Of course, for me, it's all reversed. When I was mayor, we went down to that again. So it's a little bit set off from being here. But it's a splendid day. We have great leadership in our city, and I'm proud to have been a part of it. Yes, also, I, I served at that end, and I served at this end. I served at both ends. And it, what was, what's really nice about our 125th is I get to see a lot of my old colleagues, and I don't mean by age old, but my old colleagues that we served together some before me and some after me, and it's, it's been a pleasure. I enjoyed tremendously my, my service with the city. It was really a lot of fun. And I know as council people, sometimes it's not fun, and as mayor, it's not fun. But trust me, when you're through with your service, you will look back onto it as, as a wonderful experience. And I know all of you will. We have a wonderful city, and we're going nothing but up. So congratulations to Oklahoma City on their 125th birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I, I, I have said before many times, in our system of government, where we have a, a city manager form of, of leadership, that if things are going well in the city, you should ask yourself, who was the city manager today, and who were the mayor and council 10 or 20 years ago? Because it really does take a long time for the leadership in this system to start to, to show its fruits. And, I think one of the reasons this city is doing so well is we've had such great leadership on the city council in previous decades. And uh, with that, we have several members who have come back today. So I'm going to call their names individually and have them come up. And then if you'll hold your applause until they all get up here, we'll salute each of them as a group. Uh, first of all, Sam Bowman. Sam, come on up. Ken Boyer. Uh, did Jack Cornett make it this morning? I've got him on my list, but I don't see him here. Uh, Steve Dobbs is here. Jerry Foshi, have not seen Jerry. Um, Eric Groves. Jerry Gilbert. Beverly Hicks Hodges. Beverly Hodges Hicks. Sorry, got that reversed. <laughs> Willa Johnson. Skip Kelly. Guy Liebman. Uh, was Francis Lowry able to attend today? Not able to attend, okay. Uh, Gary Mars. Walt Morris. Frosty Peak. Brent Reinhardt. 
William where? William was not able to come today. And Tony Zahn. Brian Walters. Did I skip anybody? All right, let's show a round of appreciation to this leadership. And, uh, I understand at this point the Thunder Drummers are going to help us sing happy birthday to the city of Oklahoma City. So I think everybody knows the words, but we'll, we'll follow their lead. I'm not exactly sure how a drum corps plays a song, but uh, I, I think we're about to learn. We also have a proclamation and special treat today as uh, we get the clerk that's prepared to read the proclamation. We have a visitor, uh, Jason Harris is here today portraying William Couch, the first provisional mayor of Oklahoma City in 1889. So Mayor Couch, if you'll come forward, I have a proclamation to present to you. We're very pleased you could make it back on our 125th anniversary. Well, I'm very pleased we're, to be here. We're sorry you didn't live to see the first. But, <laughs> but, but nonetheless, we have a proclamation. I'll ask the clerk to read it. Whereas Oklahoma City celebrates its 125th birthday today, April 22nd, 2014. Whereas Oklahoma City was settled in a single day, April 22nd, 1889, when 10,000 boomers walked ran, ride horses, drove wagons, and rode the rails to acquire free public land. Whereas in 1889, city leaders and builders turned the railroad watering stop into a bustling commercial and transportation hub. Oklahoma City took shape from these rather simple beginnings to a spectacular city life in 2014. Whereas to celebrate Oklahoma City's birthday, City Hall will host an open house from 8 to 5 p.m. today with an exhibit with a historic exhibit of city departments in the lobby. Free birthday cake, tours of City Hall, and visits by Derek, the Oklahoma City Barons mascot, and Cooper, the Red Hawks, Hawks mascot, from noon to two today. Whereas an illustrated history lesson provided by historian Dr. Bob Blackburn and architect Jim Loftus will be provided in the chamber at 2 p.m. today for all Oklahoma City residents, school children, scholars, and tourists. Whereas, the Festival of the Arts will celebrate the city's birthday all week with children's art activities inspired by Oklahoma City's history. Whereas, citizens can take a free Spokies, Spokies Bike History Tour of downtown at 6 p.m. from the Downtown Library on April 22nd. Whereas, free Metro Transit bus rides will be offered all day in celebration of Earth Day and Oklahoma City's birthday. Now, therefore, Mick Cornett, the mayor of the city of Oklahoma City, does hereby proclaim Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014, as Oklahoma City's 125th birthday. And he further invites everyone to participate in the festivities to celebrate 125 years of Oklahoma City history as we set the stage for growth and prosperity in the next 125 years. And we are indebted to your generation, Mayor Couch. Let's show our appreciation. <laughs> Well, thank you. I would just like to say what a pleasure it is to come back and see how the city has grown from a city of tents with a few thousand residents to this metropolis that would rival any of the greatest on the East Coast. So thank you for your progress and the way you have all led our city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I so appreciate it. And you can take that back to you. Put on your hat. <laughs> they seem to be enthralled with my derby and it asked that I wear it. So. <laughs> he took it off because he came inside, I think, being, being polite. We also uh, asked the children of Oklahoma City to be a part of this celebration. 
and we had a, um, a birthday card contest, birthday card design contest, and also uh, we asked uh, the students to write an essay. And the third graders did the birthday card, and I would like to ask John Vasquez to come up. I got to meet John this morning. John, come on up. Let's show our appreciation to John and congratulate him on winning. So much, and um, and you attend which elementary school in Oklahoma City? Nichols Hills Elementary. All right. And what was your inspiration behind this birthday card? What were you trying to accomplish? I was trying to accomplish to make something big for celebrating 125 years of Oklahoma. So I wanted to do something big for Oklahoma. Well, you certainly accomplished that, and we have something for you. Let's see. Is uh, is this it? All right. Well, let's let's hold this up. I'm gonna let the council see it here. How long did this take you to accomplish? Um, like, ever since I got the paper, like I've been working for it, and then I finally got done on the last day. <laughs> well, yeah, sounds familiar. All right, you have a great future with the city staff if, if, that's, if that's your mode of operation. Just that was a cheap shot. No. All right. Well, thank you very much. I can see now why the judges chose your winner, your, your selection as the winner. So thank you very much. And uh, thank your family for bringing you down here today, too. I guess you, you want to take this back with you? What's, what's protocol here for this, for, uh, for the birthday card? Okay. Okay. We have a, a gift package for you, but I'm going to leave this here. And this is our way of saying thank you and congratulations, John. Thank you. you bet. Thank you. <laughs> and we also have an essay winner, our ask Nayeli Carrillo to come forward. And um, you entered the essay contest, which was open to all fifth graders who live in Oklahoma City. Tell us about the, the writing. What was inspiring you? Well, what inspired me was that I was trying to write an essay of all the important things that have happened and to show how Oklahoma was a great city. Good. Do we have a copy of the essay here? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, Debbie's going to go get the essay. And uh, you attend which elementary school? I'm here in elementary. And you're here with your family today. Why don't we uh, ask the fam your family and also John's family to stand and so we can show our appreciation to everybody that was able to come. Congratulations. How long did it take you to write the essay? It, it took me two days. Two days. All right. All right. This is, this is me stalling for time. Or, <laughs> put this down here for just a moment. And it looks like here it comes. Thank you very much. All right. Do you mind if I read it? Okay. All right. Have you ever been to any special events in Oklahoma City? There are so many awesome places to visit that you will want to see. Now, should you go to these places in Oklahoma City? Of course, in April 22nd, 2014, we will be celebrating Oklahoma City's birthday, and Oklahoma City will be 125 years old. I bet you will have a blast at all these cool places. Do you know any places that you think are interesting? My family and I love to see the beautiful flowers at the Myriad Gardens. We also have fun at Whitewater Bay. Sometimes my family and I go to the Harkin Theater in Bricktown to relax after a long day. There are so many events in Oklahoma City. My family and I have so much fun at the State Fair of Oklahoma that we don't want to leave. We also love to go to the Red Bud Classic Run. Another event we like to attend is going to Bricktown on the 4th of July to see the fireworks. Oklahoma City is a great place to live because of all the great things that have happened here. In 1948, the first tornado warning in the United States history was issued from Tinker Air Force Base. That's another thing that happened in Oklahoma City. Thank you very much. Congratulations. 
this is our way of showing our appreciation. Thank you very much. Let's show our appreciation. <laughs> have I gotten it all taken care of, Francis? I have. Okay, I'm going to dismiss the council at this time. Let's show a round of applause for the leadership in our city. Brian, Brett, thanks very much. Great to see you. Good luck in the yeah. Hey, Sam. See you. Hey, Brian. See you. Eric, thanks. See you guys. Thank you very much. It is a pleasant coincidence that today is also the beginning of the Arts Festival in Oklahoma City, and what better way to start the Arts Festival than to thank the people who have spent so much time getting prepared for this year's festival. And we have with us today co-chairs Kathy Bookman and Chuck Cohn, and uh, Miranda Wilson is also here, who's been working behind the scenes. Once all three of you come up. We have a proclamation. I'll ask the clerk to read it as we get settled. Whereas the 48th Annual Festival of the Arts, produced by the Arts Council of Oklahoma City, will officially open on Tuesday, April 22, 2014, for six days of exciting visual and performing arts activities. Whereas the Festival of the Arts is recognized nationally as one of the most spectacular fine arts festivals in America, featuring more than 144 visual artists, live entertainment on three stages, delicious local food, and activities for all ages. Whereas the Arts Council of Oklahoma City is taking a significant step toward making the 2014 Festival of the Arts a sustainable, eco-conscious event. Whereas all food and utensils supplied during the 2014 Festival of the Arts will be uh, compostable and the water bottles will be recyclable and receptacles for recycling and composting will be available all across Festival of the Arts grounds. Whereas 2014 Festival of the Arts co-chairs Kathy Bookman and Chuck Kahn lead a team of more than 40 different committees and 5,000 volunteers who donate their time, talents, and resources to produce the Festival of the Arts. Whereas the Festival of the Arts is Oklahoma City's annual Rite of Spring and focuses on the Arts Council of Oklahoma City's mission to bring the arts and the community together. Now, therefore, Mick Cornett, the mayor of the city of Oklahoma City, does hereby proclaim April 22nd through 27th, 2014, as Festival of the Arts Week in Oklahoma City, and urges all citizens to join in honoring the Arts Council of Oklahoma City, the volunteers, and the artists who take part in the event. Let's show our appreciation to the Arts Festival. Kathy. Thank you very much. We have a special gift. Um, do you want to go ahead and present uh, This is our festival artist, uh, Lane Leno, uh, painted this, and it's our annual festival poster, and we would like to present it to the mayor as just kind of a show of support and appreciation for the support that they have given us. Thank you very much. We already have a spot in the office for it. Thank you very much. Thank you all for having us. And we'd like to have everybody come. And today, the Arts Festival kicks off at uh, what time? 11 a.m. this morning. We will get going and uh, be going all the way through 6 o'clock Sunday. 
We hope everyone can get out. The weather's going to be gorgeous, lots of fun activities, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody there. Yeah, when you add in the weather, this has uh, the, the shapings of the biggest and best arts festival in Oklahoma City's history. And today, uh, at, the, at the lunchtime kickoff, we are saluting the city and its 125th anniversary, and many of the people whom you just saw this morning on, on stage here will be on stage there as well. And so we urge everyone who might be watching us on television to come on down to the Arts Festival and, and be a part of the celebration. And if you can't make it today, as he said, the weather's going to be great. And get out there before Sunday. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. thank you all very much. Appreciate all the work you and all your volunteers do. Still in the office of the mayor, we have an appointment for the Riverfront Development Authority. Move the appointment. Second. Cast your votes. Passage unanimously. Item four is to receive the Journal of Council Proceedings for April 15th and to approve the journal for April 8th. Move the item. Second. Cast your votes. It passes unanimously as well. And then item five is a request for uncontested continuances. Mayor, just a couple this morning on page 12. Page 12 under item 8E1. Item A, 4509 South Airline Avenue, we ask that that be stricken, the owner has secured. Item B, 1121 South Barnes Avenue, we ask that that be stricken, we need to re-notify. Item D, 10901 North Pennsylvania, we ask that that be stricken, the owner has secured. Item H, 2701 Northeast 14th Place, we ask that that be stricken, the owner has secured. And item J, 1614 Northwest 16th Street, we ask that that be stricken. We need to re-notify. Any other requests for uncontested continuances? Then we'll recess the council meeting, convene as the Oklahoma City Municipal Facilities Authority. There are three items. Move the item. Second. All right, comments or questions on the MFA? Your Honor, I have a little question uh -huh. on number A. Uh, this is a project to uh, do, uh, finish up the central maintenance facility. And who, do, who are they responsible for in terms of maintenance? I'm sorry? The central maintenance facility, who are they responsible for? Well, the central maintenance uh, facility is a multi-departmental facility. Is it like, for instance, building? Is it, is it building maintenance, it, 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 it's, uh, the, the general services has, has uh, facilities out there to repair the fleet, the fire maintenance, fire fleet maintenance is out there, the street department is out there, so the street yard is out there uh, where they keep, they keep their fleet. It's where our household hazardous waste disposal site is. Um, AMSA is looking at building a facility out there as a part of this uh, expansion that they will be paying for. And so it, it, it's really a lot of our field services in one location. That and, and the water field service at, at, at the 5th and Pan are our two major. Are they responsible for the maintenance of the building, for instance? Of this building? <clears throat> building maintenance is not out there at this time. Okay, so central maintenance isn't, isn't totally central, and we don't have a central maintenance facility in total yet. Well, I don't think we will ever have one uh, one location for everything, but it, we are, are more combined than we used to be. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Ready to vote the MFA? All right, cast your votes. It passes unanimously. <clears throat> we'll adjourn the OCMFA, convene the Oklahoma City Public Property Authority, just the claims and payroll today. Move the item. Second. All right, cast your votes. It passes unanimously. We'll adjourn the OCPPA, convene as the Oklahoma City Environmental Assistance Trust. Two items. Move the items. Second. Comments here on the EAT? All right, cast your votes. It passes unanimously. We'll reconvene the council meeting with the consent docket. Second. All right. Are there any individual considerations this morning? Your Honor, I have a few minor questions on a couple items. Uh, a, B, D2, and K1. A, B. D2. D is in dog. D is in dog. And K is in king. Uh, number one. 
Okay. And Mayor, I had uh, 6E and 6W. All right. Pat, you want to go ahead and get us started? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on number uh, 6A, this is a, a proposal for a, a, a database sharing operation. And with who are we sharing data? And uh, do we have a, a, some justification for spending almost a million dollars doing it? Yeah, uh, Councilman, uh, a big portion of that, over $600,000, is uh, over $500,000 is from grant, grant funding. The other $100,000 is from asset forfeiture. And that's on the, uh, the uh, I believe, Bay, what's it, Bay, Blaze system, Bay system. And that's for, the, that's for the information sharing that we applied for through the state grant that connects all the different agencies within the metro area as far as sharing information. Uh, the second one, the second one is a system that needs to be upgraded within our Intel system. It's a separate system. Uh, the reason we went to two different systems is the, is, is the one, the information sharing system wasn't really adequate for the Intel system. So, because uh, it's, a, it's a total separate true intelligence gathering system, uh, but they are able to connect. Uh, both systems are able to connect. So it's really an upgrade with, with funding from the city and then also the majority of the second one is from grant funding. I, I, I'm less concerned where the money came from than the purpose of the operation. Do we see the value bill for this? Yes. Yeah, so what, what we've wanted to do for quite some time with the, with the information sharing system is being able to share data. Basically, if it, crime reports and those types of things, with, we have 15, about 15 different agencies within the metro area. And for us to be able to connect with those agencies that, and share our information with them for investigative purposes, for officers in the field to be able to investigate crimes, uh, connect, you know, be able to connect the dots. You know, I mean, we're data driven anymore in policing, and it really allows officers to be able to connect the dots and locate suspects because suspects do not care where your jurisdiction is. And this this project will give us access, give us the city of Oklahoma City access to all these other. Correct. Right. Agencies. Correct. Right now we have we have agreements with about six different agencies, and this this includes Norman. Edmond, some of the Midwest cities, some of the larger agencies, not only will they be able to access our information, but we're able to access theirs. Thank you, Bill. Uh -huh. D2, uh, this is a project uh, uh, to buy iPads, schools. Do we have any information? Has there been any studies made that you're aware of that shows the value of having iPads in schools? I can't answer that for you, sir. I don't know that. Well, it seems like a lot of the school districts are doing this just because the first one started doing it without any real indication that this is a, a real assistance learning process. So, but I, I, if you have, if, any, if somebody has a study that shows that, I would be interested in uh, K1, this is a project, a street project, and it, they proposed to start in the summer of 2014 and be completed in the winter of 2015 which is a fairly long period of time. Have we done anything to speed up the process of those uh, facilities, those kind of projects? Mr. Councilman, I think uh, I had the same question that you did about winter 15. It's actually early 15, so it's not the end of 2015. It's the earlier part of 15. So spring of 15 is when this project is expected to be completed. The ODOT work then will tie in summer of 15 and begin on Portland Avenue. But, uh, on the uh, project itself, Eric, have we done anything, we, the city of Oklahoma City, done anything to, to improve the speed at which those projects are accomplished? We are. We're actively looking at actual time frames of similar work. Um, we're not using general measures now. We're also encouraging the contractor on a variety of basis on all of our city work now, either through encouragement with incentive type projects, um, also encouraging to finish early if possible, um, just with updates to specifications to the contract. Okay, and this contract included all those? It will. Okay, thank you. All right. Meg? Yeah, just a very quick question, Chief. Uh, we've talked about uh, two new helicopters that the city is acquiring, and it looks like we're declaring um, obsolete and surplus the two that we currently own. I was just curious if you have any idea um, at auction what they might bring. Well, just a ballpark is around 500000 Could be a little less, could be a little more. Just to be, We've got one helicopter that's you know just been overhauled or in the process. We'll probably bring more than the other, but you know, in the ballpark around 500 each. 
And I'm just who are likely buyers. I'm just curious. Well, other, I mean, other, other departments, other, other departments, people? other agencies, other uh, you know, just it's whoever needs a helicopter, really, but, uh, but primarily other municipalities. Okay. Great, and it, it will go into an account that helps us offset the cost of. It'll go into the, to the, uh, the to the uh, police, uh, the fire police uh, sales tax account is where the money <coughs> coming from to purchase the Eurocopters. So the sale of those will go back into that account to reimburse that. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and my second uh, question is on 6W, and um, this is an item um, that's already been approved by the MAPS Advisory Board. Um, will this take the, the Central Park, our, our new MAPS Park, all the way down to the river? I think this is, David? Uh, this contract is just for the upper park. It's okay. For, oh, okay. for complete final design of the upper park only right now. Alrighty, um, but we are working with our park designers to help us identify that little edge piece from the end of the park right. we, <clears> down we, to the shoreline. Right, we did the amendment with the master plan and they included some, some design for that, that piece down there. So we, we do have a master plan that connects the entire park with the river. Great, but this is still phase Just, just for one. the upper park, phase Alrighty. one and phase two. Great, thank you, David. All right, ready to vote the consent docket? Cast your votes. And it passed unanimously. On to the concurrence docket, is there a motion? Second. All right, any individual considerations on the concurrence docket? All right, cast your votes. It passed unanimously. That puts us on to item eight. These are items that require a separate vote. The first is a zoning case. It's in Ward 7 at 136 Northeast 51st Street. It's currently R1 single family residential, and it would become an I-2 moderate industrial district. John? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is the applicant present? Can you please tell us the purpose of the rezoning? Uh, it's just three blocks there on Northeast 50th and, and We will need your name and address Malcolm for Hall. the record. Pardon me. Malcolm Hall, uh, 6800 West Melrose in Oklahoma City. I'm a real estate investor for 47 years in Oklahoma City. Uh, that's on Northeast 50th, uh, fronting there right next to where the old Girl Scout uh, office building used to be. And it's in front of the, um, uh, south of, but in front of the, uh, Oklahoma State Medical Licensure Board, and we will probably use this as part of the enlargement to take care of, of, of their needs over the future, in future years. I have a copy of the easement. Uh, it was prepared, but it was prepared wrong. I corrected it and uh, have it today to submit, subject to the approval of the um, Assistant Municipal Counselor and, of course, City Clerk. All right. I move for approval. Second. All right. Cast your votes on item 8A1 and it passes unanimously. Item 8A2 is also a zoning case in Ward 7 at 1411 Southeast 19th Street. It's currently R1 single family and AE2 airport environ zone two district and it become a new simplified plan unit development. John? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is the applicant put present? Um, I'll go ahead and move for approval. If my memory serves me correct, um, we approved not too long ago <clears throat> a couple of zoning changes right in this area. So okay. um, I move for approval. All right, we have a motion to second. Is there anyone here who showed up today hoping to speak on this item? All right, cast your votes, and it passes unanimously. Item 8B is a series of easement cases. The first is in Ward 7. It's at 701 West Britain Road. John, you okay with this? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, is the applicant present? Looks like he is. I'm John Swinford, uh, 4112 North Harvey Parkway, and I represent the applicant. All right. Um, the purpose of uh, this uh, closure is to, what's the purpose? I apologize. I'm sorry, what's the purpose to close this off? Well, there, the, uh, the, this was owned by the school board, mm -hmm. and this entire block uh, was owned by the school board, but it had two different pieces to it. The school was on the south edge of it, and then there is basically bare land on the, on the uh, north edge, and they can be joined up by way of the vacating or closing the alley, which will 
make the uh, area uh, compatible with the development that is, is, is here. I'm excited about this uh, potential development um, because the school, for example, uh, has been vacant and dilapidated for years on top of years. So it's good to see something positive is getting ready to uh, care um, with, um, this, with this site. I move for approval. Second. All right, cast your votes on item 8B1. It passes unanimously. Item 8B2 is an easement issue in Ward 8. The address is 12901 Jasmine Lane. Pat? Thank you. This is in conjunction with a replatting of an uh, old subdivision, uh, Hidden Creek, Section 5, being platted. Uh, I think primarily, Henry, very to speak on that one. Good morning, Tim Johnson, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, yes, you're correct. This is part of a replat to adjust some of the lot lines in the old Section 5. Uh, when this is vacated, then the new plat, Section 7, will take its place. Are there any questions of the developer? Did anybody sign up to speak on this? No. Move approval. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. We're voting on item 8B2. Cast your votes. And it passed unanimously. Item 8B3 is an easement issue in Ward 2 on um, North Walker Avenue near 56 and 57th Street. Ed? Anyone sign up to speak? This had unanimous planning uh, commission approval, no protests, I move for approval. All right, we have a motion and a second. We're voting on item 8B3, and it passed unanimously. Item 8C is a zoning case in Ward 8. It was recommended for denial at the planning commission. And Pat, we have one person that has signed up to speak. Well, why don't we hear from that person? All right, Debbie Francis. The address of this zoning case is 14618 North Council Road. The request is to go from AA Agricultural to a new plan unit development. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Debbie Francis. I live at 7528 Northwest 150th, which if you look at that map, it's that Northeast Square. That is our home. Um, if you all that don't know, about 150th Street is predominantly acreages. We live on a little over four acres. Everyone across the street lives on probably 20 acres. You know, we are concerned about the density that is proposed for this uh, subdivision and the lot size of being only 5,000 square feet, as well as a 15-foot setback, which is nothing, in my opinion, about, you know, how this subdivision should. I understand with progress we're going to have to have some subdivisions being built around us, but I really do feel like the size of the homes here is a very a large problem it will put additional traffic on 150th street the entrance to this section on tract 1 r1 on the right hand side as uh, butts up to our property and that's the only entrance to get into that section uh, i have concern about fire hazard going in and out of that section as well as the fact that it's at the top of the hill so anybody turning left out of that it's a blind hill people fly down 150th and just we just see potential accident problems uh, within this area so we have concerns and I speak with a lot of about a lot of the people that are on our street that have concerns about uh, not only the size of the lots that are here but as, as well as the additional traffic it's going to uh, visit on the street as well as this the site of the um, street of the uh, uh, road that's on here and that's the only way you can get into that because of the floodplain so it's it's a concern it's a concern uh we live at the base of the hill so that's the top of the hill get to our property it's the base of the hill <clears throat> every winter we have two to three people run over our mailbox slide right through the hill um, i just see that being even a greater concern here and um, the house that we have is now sandwiched between a subdivision by dr horton which is falling springs and now this new one and the house is architecturally significant as it was designed by robert roloff so we are trying to preserve architecturally the house, uh, which may hit historical register at some point in time. So just wanted to address our concerns, especially about the density of this subdivision. Excuse me, did you have a chance to express your concerns at the planning? Well, I have not. I have not. Thank you. Thank you. The applicant is here. Would you like to talk about the project, Dennis? I would. Thank you, Mayor. Members of Council, Dennis Box, 522 Colcord Drive. I'm here with Kendall Dillon. Um, this is an item, if you look at your staff report, staff recommends approval. The uh, density issue 
if you'll look up at the map, track two, we have uh, approximately 59 lots that are scheduled to be patio homes. The remainder of the entire tract will be under the subdivision regulations of the R1. And we'd like to make that an amendment to our PUD that the only lots that will be less than the 6,000 square feet would be 60 lots in track two. So the area adjacent to uh, uh, the lady that just spoke would all be under the R1 single family regulations. If you look at your staff report and you look at your comprehensive plan, this whole area is an urban uh, density growth area and this area is slated for single family residential development and uh, so we would ask for your approval. We're ready to answer any questions. <clears throat> the engineer Kendall Dillon is here. As you can tell, uh, our zoning and our Platted area is consistent with PUD 1300, which is just south of the area that she was speaking about. Our densities are in line with the other subdivisions that are in the general area. And uh, with regard to this application, uh, as indicated, it is in conformance with Oklahoma City Plan. And we would ask that you provide the additional limitation that only 60 of our lots out of the 400 lots can be between five and 6,000 feet, which would be patio homes. That'd only be in tract two. Are there any questions, Box? Doesn't seem to be. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else signed up to speak on this? No, meeting? just the one person. Okay. Well, then I, it, it's, uh, I know it's an extraordinary thing for me to suggest that we overrule what the Planning Commission did. I'm not sure that they fully understood the concept. Patio homes are a real hot item on the market right now. People are, are looking downsize and they're, they're in demand. I think that's this helps serve that demand. The traffic problems on 150th are, are, are serious and real, but that project will, that street will be improved to four lanes, takes additional signalization put on it. I think maybe we're, we've addressed that problem on a longer term. Um, having considered this for some time, I would vote to approve. Okay. As amended. As amended. There are several TEs and, I, and the applicant has agreed to all the TEs. We agreed to all the TEs. The one that deals with setbacks, that's already in the uh, PUD. So the staff, it's my understanding, is agreeable to take that out. But all the rest of them we agreed to. Limitation on signs, et cetera. Thank you very much. Okay. So the motion is to approve. The motion is to approve. Is there a second? second. Okay. There's a Ma second. Mayor, I, have, I have a question. The, the lady talked about a setback um, across from where her property is. Is that, did I understand that right? I'm not exactly sure in regards to what she was referring to, but at least in regards to the setbacks in the, uh, our proposed development, there are 20-foot front setbacks, which meets the R1 code in Track 1. Track 2, which is away from her, what we've done is we agreed to a 15-foot front setback for the house, but a minimum of a 20 for the garage, so that that way the garage will still recess back and it gives it a little bit different feel. So that, at least in terms of our project and the PUD, that's the way we've structured the front setbacks. I mean, that, that seems to be a, a shallow setback to me. 20 feet, I think that's what the R1 requires. Correct. It may not be enough, but that's what the regulations require. And, and we, you know, until we change the regulations, then we'll have to, uh, I think, allow them. Of course, this is a PUD. We could change it around here. We sure could. All right, the motion on the floor is for approval, and we have a second. Any other comments or questions before we vote? All right, cast your votes. The motion passes, six to two. Thank you, Your Honor. Hmm? On to item 8D, this is a public hearing regarding dilapidated structures. We have a motion and a second. Is there anyone here hoping to speak or any item listed under 8D? All right. We have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. Oh, 8D uh, is uh, dilapidated structures. Did you come hoping to speak on one of those items? Good morning. Good morning. I will need your name and address for the record. Uh, Glenn King at 416 Northwest 29th Street. Okay, and which property were you wanting to speak about? 
Uh, the uh, 1151 property on Northeast 23rd that caught fire about March 27th. Okay. And we're, we're seeing pictures of this now. Let's ask Charles and our staff what he can tell us about the history of this property. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of beyond saving right now. It'll have to be either raised and rebuilt. If that's what Mr. King is wanting to do, we'll work with him. But at this point, it's... You know, it's in that bad enough shape. It's not rebuildable at this point. Okay. John, it's in Ward 7. Um, definitely would like to keep keep it on the uh, list. And I do remember uh, when this fire happened a few uh, weeks ago, um, it was around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning where uh, we had nearly 100 uh, firefighters fighting this fire. I can remember getting a uh, phone call at that time saying that, uh, 23rd, Northeast 23rd from Lottie uh, to Kelly was blocked off and that was a major uh, fire. And what happened with this particular uh, case, uh, you had a lot of um, chemicals uh, in it which caused um, a huge explosion and that caused for the fire department uh, to send out, I want to say they had nearly a hundred uh, firefighters fighting this uh, fire from uh, I want to say from maybe 10 um, p.m. to nearly uh, 5 a.m. Uh, again, that was a few weeks ago. So um, work with staff and uh, let's keep it on. All right. Glenn, what would you like to tell us about the property? Um, yeah, I, I, I pretty much agree with uh, the property being demolished. Um, it's kind of a, it was a five plex, but uh, the only part that survived it was the uh, part that it was my shop. And the uh, part that did burn was mainly constructed with a wooden ceiling. And the parts that didn't burn was the part that was brick and metal. So right up until the, right up until the, right up until my, the point where my shop begins and everything else burns, I am in support of me being able to get permission so to you want to keep it. your shop and so and just just the shop yeah. part charles do you have enough information at this point to be able to distinguish between what he's asking and and where we are on this not at this point but we'll we'll look at anything he submits to us in the next 30 days I all right well glenn we got some time here so if you'll just work with our city staff and and talk through the issue of trying to keep one part of the of the property and um, and take care of cleaning up the rest of it. I don't think we'll have any any issues here, but it is going to be left on the docket today, pending uh, discussions with our staff as you try to figure out what we're going to do next. Thank you very much. All right. All Thanks right. for coming down today. Thank you. All right. Let's vote on item 8D. These are the dilapidated structures on the list. And it passed unanimously. Item 8E is a public hearing regarding unsecured structures. Is there anyone here hoping to speak? And are any item listed under 8E? Yes, come on forward. You might pull that microphone down and I'll need your name and address for the record. My name is Virginia Estrada. Are you needing my address for my home or for where I work at? Either one. Okay, it's, uh, the building is 1405 North Council. I am the property manager mm -hmm. and my boss is Tim Ewan. He is in California. Okay. And so we're in the process of uh, doing a demolish on that building. Um, we've got Chris Nate with uh, mid wrecking. He will be doing that and he's waiting on some more issues through the city. It'll All right. Okay. Charles, what can you tell us about this property? From our understanding, they're waiting on their DEQ evaluations to, to get back. If they're demolishing, of course, we can work with them on that too. All right. James, you have any comments on this? It's in Ward One. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, it's definitely unsecured. I've. I've drive it by looks there. better than that I've, now. I drive by there quite a bit, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we definitely need to leave it on, but yes. if you're going to demolish it. Then it's it's being cleaned up more than that. That's I don't know when that was taken, but it. I'm, well, I'm what are you hoping to, to do to the demolished. property? We're going to have it cleaned up. We're not going to have anything on there. Probably parking. So you're going to just take the whole building down? Take the down whole building, eight, and have the eight units. Parking and, and, yes, sir. And you said eight units. So you're going to rebuild? No, or, sir. There, there are eight units that's going to be demolished. Okay. Yes. And then so you'll turn that into surface parking? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, if you would pass along a, a message to the, to the owner of the property that we're very disappointed we're even having to get involved in this. Yes. And um, the, the sooner the better they clean it up, yes, the better sir. it'll help the neighborhood. Yes, sir. All right. 
Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Charles, we'll leave it on. All right, how about a motion then on all the unsecured structures? Move the items. Cast your votes. Passed unanimously. All right, we're on to item 8F. This is a, a series of revocable right-of-way permits. The first is from the Greater Oklahoma City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and they will be hosting the El Dia de los Ninos Children's Day on April 27th on Southwest 29th Street between Western and Walker. And David Castillo is here. Good morning, David. Good morning, David Castillo, uh, 309 Southwest 59th. I uh, just wanted to uh, welcome everybody and, and invite everybody to come out to the Dia de los Niños. It's going to be a great event. This is our second year putting this event together. I have Emma Dean uh, Cradlewell with me that's uh, been helping coordinate it and get it together. We've got all kinds of neat stuff going on for the kids. It's a good family day. Last year we had thousands of people sh show up. Uh, great family day. Dia de los Niños is the day of the child in Mexico. So there'll be, there'll be activities for the kids all day long. Uh, the Red Cross is, is going to be there. They'll be doing uh, preparedness for, uh, for children, for tornadoes. Uh, the Metropolitan Library System will be there uh, with projects, different types of projects, arts and crafts also for, for the kids. Uh, we have clowns, we have balloons, we have all kinds of entertainment going on, so it should be a great day and good food. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this event is in Ward 4. All right. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. And it passed unanimously. And again, that's on April 27th on from, Southwest 29th. From 12 to 6. Everybody's welcome to come. All right. Thanks, Thanks. David. Okay. Appreciate your work. Item 8F2 is a request from the Oklahoma City Marathon, Inc. to hold the Oklahoma City Memorial Mar Marathon. And it looks like Molly's here. Hi. Good morning. Um, Molly Bennett, 620 North Harvey. Um, first, I just wanted to give you guys, this is last year's poster, uh -huh. and we wanted to give it to you, so I'll just set it with Okay, that. sure, thank you. Um, as of today, we I just checked about 10 minutes ago, and we're at 24,854 runners. We have um, four more days, and they can register at the Health and Fitness Expo, so we're expecting to hopefully cap out. Our cap is 27,000 and we think we're going to make it. We've already sold out in two races. So we're really excited and uh, we appreciate everything that you guys do for us to make this happen. And Josh. Well, likewise, it's a tremendous event. And, you know, we started this to raise money and to, to remind people of what happened on April 19th of 95. And mm -hmm. it's turned into an economic development uh, opportunity. 24,000 people, many of them visiting from out of town. And if you need a hotel room in Oklahoma City this weekend, I hope you already have your reservation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we're maxed out on Meridian and Quell Springs and downtown. So It's one of our largest events. Molly, thank you for all thank your work. You and so please much. pass along our appreciation to the staff, and we will, will vote on it now. Thank you. And that Honor, is approved. Yeah, Pat. Uh, on the, uh, oh, did I not get a motion? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we all probably ought to get a motion before we vote. Okay. Pat, go ahead. I'll make a motion, but I want to ask a question also. Okay, go ahead. Uh, are, are the streets going to be closed? The streets will be closed. It's a phase process. As, as runners go by, the streets could open up and other okay. streets close. There, there will be some Oklahoma City Police Department people to make sure there's availability uh, across traffic. Because I've had some uh, issues before with closing streets races. I, I think that there's been a lot of improvement in how it's handled, and I congratulate you all on it. Thank you. Now, the Hefner Trails along the right, will that be closed? During the entire race, just during. Well, we run from um, Britain Road. We go west all the way to the lake, and then we go. We come around at Stars and Stripes. So right after that, when we turn onto Grand, going back east, that's it. that's the only part of the lake. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. If I could also just make a comment, I really want to thank the Memorial <clears throat> Group for working um, so closely with all the merchants downtown and Automobile Alley. Uh, the world has changed in the years that they've uh, been putting this race on, and so they were really um, helpful in having an early meeting and, and understanding that some of the businesses need to be open, people need to get there, and so I think the level of cooperation has really grown. Yes, we um, actually it. yesterday went to all the businesses in Automobile Alley and gave them a kind of a party pack with cowbells and and pom-poms and they actually will have their own parking and credentials so we don't have any issue with them getting out of in and out of their businesses perfect and so. i thought the other really innovative thing was uh passes to the restaurants yes. instead of having to feed everybody and put on a separate event uh lots of the restaurants are going to be able to host 
folks that are down there. So it's a really wonderful partnership. I thank yes. you so much. Thank the process has improved every year. I want to congratulate you on Thank that. you. Mm -hmm. We have a motion from Pat and Meg. Is that a second? Cast your votes, and it passed unanimously. Item 8F3 is a request from Red Coyote Running and Fitness to hold the McNelly's Pub Run. You're back. You guys are busy up there in Midtown. Are busy. I know, right? It's just bringing more fun stuff to Ward 6 for you, though. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, fourth annual. So the time is flying by since we've done our first one. So we are fourth annual uh, pub run. We are not going to have 27,000 runners for this. No. <laughs> uh, but we, we expect a, around 1,000, which is a, kind of the, the size that we want. Uh, it rolls through the Mesa Parks and Heritage Hills, so you get to run through the great neighborhood, see a lot of the beautiful houses, and comes right back to us. So it uh, starts at 3 p.m., and it's only four miles, so it's about an hour race. Yeah. Um, and we, uh, this year we added the franchise radio station, which is new to Oklahoma City, so they'll be doing the live remote. So that'll add a lot of fun to it this year. Well, congratulations. And I neglected to ask for your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Start it's off. Uh, Joe Wolf, 1100 North Classen Drive. All right. And Thank you. And good luck approval. with the event. Okay. All right. We're voting on item 8F3. Cast your votes. It passes unanimously. Item 8F4 is an organization holding an event called Walk a Mile in My Shoes. The event is scheduled for April 26th, and it's in Bricktown. And you must be uh, LaDonna. I am, thank Good you. Morning. I'm LaDonna Wolfus, 1920 Southeast, 18th and more. And um, Walk a Mile in My Shoes, this will be our fourth year to do it. It's an awareness event that is uh, really designed to help people learn about the needs of children in foster care and ways that we as a community can get behind them. So we have different agencies from the city um, present to give out information on ways that people can volunteer or become foster parents or become adoptive parents. And then after people have a chance to process the information, we all walk as a group, and the participants are asked to bring a suitcase to carry, which of course is symbolic of the many moves and disruptions that children in foster care often endure. And they are also um, encouraged to donate the suitcases if they would like, as well as a new pair of shoes, which then we pass along to the children of Oklahoma who are in foster care. So it's a free event, it's a family-oriented event, and we would love to invite each of you to come and join us as well. It's this Saturday and at the Bricktown Ballpark at 9 o'clock. Right, I move for approval. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. We're voting on item 8F4. Cast your votes. And it passed unanimously. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 8J is claims recommended for denial. Oh, hold on. I go from F to J. Well, I've just lost page 13 somewhere in here. All right, thanks. Um, item 8G is, uh, yeah, I know that page is here somewhere. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> I just saw it. Um, it's an opportunity for us to go into executive session to discuss our collective bargaining uh, issues with our labor unions. Okay, motion and a second to move 8G to executive session and it passes unanimously. And then item 8H is a legal issue. Do we need executive session on this? Yes. Okay. How about a motion? Item 8H moves to executive session. And then item 8I, I understand we do not need executive session. All right. Motion and a second to strike item 8I, and it passes unanimously. All right. Now we're on item 8J, which is claims recommended for denial. Has anyone signed up to speak? Is there anyone here hoping to speak on item 8J, claims recommended for denial? All right, how about a motion? Second. Cast your votes. It passed unanimously. Item 9 is items from council. As we introduced a week ago, there's an ordinance from Councilman Shadid and Councilman Ryan uh, discussing uh, uh, the gifts received and accepted by mayors and council members. This is a public hearing today. Did anyone show up today hoping to speak on this item? All right, unless there's a comment from council, I'll just look for a motion to send it through. Your Honor, I have a, a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, the first is uh, the um, under D, D uh, paragraph two, gifts given to the mayor or councilman members by his uh, relatives in the first degree of consequence, whatever that is, the, well, the first degree of infinity. What would the second degree take us to? Because it seems like it's pretty narrow as I was explaining. 
I wish I brought my chart with me today, Councilman, but uh, it would include thing, uh, people like grandparents, um, grandchildren. I think it goes to aunts and uncles. Um, I think cousins are in there. Is that the second degree? Second degree. I think we ought to maybe expand it a little bit. The first degree seems a little bit restrictive. Perhaps not since this is not going to generate a lot of gifts, uh, at least my family. But anyway, um, <laughs> and then the uh, other uh, question I had was on the amount of dollars, the aggregate of dollars, $300. Uh, is that too low? I'd like to hear from my colleague. Or too high, or is it the right number? It's $300, just to be clear, every six months. I think the state's going to 400 is what I thought with regard to lobbyists and five going to five they're going to five in a calendar year okay so, so our 300 every six months is even in excess of what the state will require well i'll have that thank you Arnie. okay i would move we uh, go ahead put it on the agenda then for approval all right we have a motion and a second cast your votes it passes unanimously and moves forward for a, a final hearing i don't see the date on here uh, next week next week all right we're still on items from council. James, you have anything? Ed? All right. Larry? Pete? Meg? No, I guess I just really do want to encourage everybody to go out to the Arts Festival. Spectacular day. Great art uh, and delicious food. So it opens today at 11 o'clock and runs through Sunday at 6. It's um, really the first, I think, rite of spring in Oklahoma City, and I just want everybody to come on down. All right. John, Pat? Nothing else, Your Honor. All right. City manager reports? Mr. Mayor, the hotel motel tax is in the packet. It's strong again this month. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions in regard to that. And I just want to uh, re-announce that uh, yesterday I did make some appointments for department head positions that Aubrey Hammondtree, who's been acting uh, planning director, will be taking on that role in a permanent position. And that Doug Cupper from Wichita, Kansas, who is the present park structure in Wichita, will be uh, Filling the parks director role, Wendell is retiring later this month and a week or two later than Doug will be joining us on that. I was very pleased. It was kind of a fun process to go to. People were excited about the city and we had uh, some great applicants from all across the country. So we were able to really have a choice of some great people. And so I'm very, very pleased uh, with, with these two selections. Okay. Citizens to be heard. Is anyone signed up to speak? All right, Frosty, now's your chance. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have uh, executive session. We'll be back. <laughs>